Hi everyone, my name is Kinya Ota. I have spent more than 10 years studying goldfish evolution and development. Recently, my friend asked me to make detailed videos about the evolutionary developmental biology of goldfish. So I have decided to produce this video series based on my papers and my book. We will explore goldfish evolution. In the previous video, we discussed the method for observing hatched larvae and juveniles. This time, we will explain about one of the live feed organisms for the larvae. There are two points to consider when feeding goldfish. One is to avoid polluting the water. The other is to ensure that each individual in the tank receives sufficient food. Especially for newly hatched goldfish, they are still very small and can easily die in large numbers due to poor water quality or lack of nutrition. Therefore, careful attention is required. As the fish grow from larvae to juveniles, their body size increases significantly. Therefore, it is necessary to select the appropriate food according to their developmental stage. Large juveniles and adults can easily consume large food. However, newly hatched larvae have very small mouths and cannot eat large food. Thus, we feed them fine powdered dry feed or live tiny plankton. Dry food is easy even with just dry food. The goldfish can grow well. However, there are many benefits to feeding live plankton. Therefore, in our laboratory, we cultivate paramecium and artemian uh, as a food and give them to the goldfish. In fact, larvae and juveniles included in our paper grow up eating paramecium and artemia. Especially paramecium, if well cultivated, becomes a convenient food organism for raising newly hatched larvae. Paramecium is a very small unicellular eukaryote that lives in fresh water. Because of its small size, even newly hatched larvae can eat it. Additionally, since it is originally a freshwater organism, it can live in the tank with a goldfish for a while if the density is low. This makes it a valuable feed organism for small larvae where water changes are difficult. In a tank with goldfish, if there are few larvae, they can grow by eating the paramecium in the tank for one to two days even without additional feeding. Therefore, when we cannot come to the laboratory, we use this organism as a feed. Now let's take a brief look at how to cultivate paramecium. Probably various methods and introduced by goldfish and medaka breeders on the internet. Referring to such information, we tried various methods and finally arrived at using powdered green juice. After trying different methods, this provided to be the easiest. Prepare a container of about 20 liters and dissolve green juice powder in it. You can use tap water directly. Add water containing a certain density of paramecium to this. Depending on the temperature, container size, location, and concentration of green juice, the density of paramecium will increase in 2 to 4 days. So take a part of this paramecium water into a dish and check it under a microscope or pour it into a transparent container and check the state of the water without microscope. If you look closely, you should see small particles. Then siphon the paramecium into another container and feed it to the goldfish larvae. The process is as shown, but uh, my explanation might have been too brief. Some of you may wonder how much paramecium is needed to sustain a certain number of goldfish. Indeed, my explanation may not be helpful if you want to try it yourself. Therefore, to give you a brief idea, I will explain our laboratory's example in more detail. During the spawning season, we handle 100 to 500 hatched larvae and juveniles every week. For these larvae and juveniles, we prepare a 420 liter container and check the density of paramecium in each container every two days. These containers are kept in an air-conditioned room. 
The reason for preparing for container is that it is difficult to manage the growth of paramecium strictly according to the timing of larvae hatching. But with four containers, one of them should have a stable growth of paramecium. So when the larvae hatch and start eating with correct paramecium from the container with the most growth and use it as a food. If we maintain the condition where paramecium is stably growing in at at least one of the four container every day, we can provide enough feed for about 100 larvae during early stages. The purpose of feeding paramecium is to avoid using dry food or artemia and to help the larvae get through the sensitive early stage quickly. Therefore, it is not needed as much once the fish have grown larger. Hence, as long as paramecium can be stably grow when needed, it does not require a big amount. Uh, so far, this container size and the number have worked well. However, sometimes we need a large amount of paramecium urgently. In such cases, we increase the concentration of green juice and the culture paramecium. Raising the temperature to above 25 degrees also help obtaining more paramecium. As shown in previous videos, fertilized eggs hatched in about 4 days. Therefore, we can roughly predict the number of larvae that will hatch the four days after artificial fertilization. Based on this prediction, we prepare the environment for large growth of paramecium in advance. Additionally, it is worth noting that the container are covered with algae inside. For some reason, maintaining this environment helps paramecium grow stably. Honestly, we also tried to cultivate paramecium strictly in the sterilized glass containers. But it doesn't work very well in our laboratory. After trial and error, we concluded that this management method is the easiest. So, there are many other microorganisms living in these containers besides paramecium. This raised concerns about what exactly is growing in the containers. Therefore, we pay attention to the color of the water to check for undesirable microorganisms. Moreover, the water with freshly added green juice is greenish. And so, if you feed this really fresh green water to goldfish before paramecium has grown up enough, it is not effective. Over time, the water may turn green due to algae, making it hard to see paramecium, but they might still be there if you look closely. In this case, we use it as food. In any cases, we carefully check what microorganisms are growing in the container before using them as food. To ensure that all larvae received enough paramecium, we add paramecium water in the morning and check the density in the tank in the afternoon or next day. If paramecium decreases, we add more paramecium water. Another important point is to always cover the containers. Any type of cover that allows ventilation and prevents insects from entering is sufficient. Mosquitoes particularly like paramecia water and if you are not careful, they will lay eggs in it. If mosquitoes start flying around the laboratory or breeding room, it becomes very annoying. Therefore, we pay close attention to this and manage it properly. To summarize, we take care of following point in our laboratory. Prepare multiple containers. Plan the growth of paramecium. Pay attention to water color. Always cover the containers. I forgot to mention how we obtained the initial paramecium culture. We got the initial paramecium from the Taiwan Zebrafish Core Facility at the Academia Sinica. You may find the institutions in your area that maintain paramecium cultures. There are methods to isolate paramecium from nature, but uh, it seems a bit complicated, so we haven't tried it yet. We will report if we have a chance to try it in near future. This time we explained how to grow and manage paramecium in our laboratory. If you want to grow paramecium and feed it to your goldfish, 
And if you have any questions, please leave a comment. Now a preview of next episode. These live and grew up eating paramecium will need more nutrition. Next live feed organisms will be Artemia. In the next episode, we will explain about Artemia. It is time to say goodbye. I hope you learned something new about goldfish development and evolution from this episode. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch the next episode. See you soon.